What? What? And hello, it's Stephanie Fox and Michael Askew. We're here with Bug Tech on another episode of Does It Bite? And what we're going to talk about today doesn't actually bite, but they have a mean sting. Mm -hmm. What is it, Michael? It's bees, wasps, especially right here in West Texas. All right. So tell us a little bit about what you see in terms of bees, wasps, and hornets. Oh, yeah. So around here in West Texas, we do have all those. Yeah. Um, And they're very important to our ecosystem. We've all seen the bee movie. We know, <laughs> yeah. we know what pollination means to the ecosystem. Right, and we have to have them. Yeah. I mean, it's such an important thing yeah. to have these pollinators. Wasps, I know, can be a nuisance, but they also pollinate. So they're they're in there with the bees as well. So hmm. the biggest thing about these guys is that they pollinate, and we have to have them in our area to keep everything beautiful as West Texas and Eastern New Mexico can be. Yeah, but um, when when do you get calls about? people who are having problems with these insects? So these guys are, are kind of seasonal, but okay. they're kind of not. They're usually always around, okay. but they get very active during certain times of year. Okay. So during the spring, the birds and the bees, we start seeing a whole bunch of activity right. with the bees. Um, they're usually swarming, is what we call swarming. So they take their colony and move it from place to place. Hmm. So we get a lot of calls about football-sized bundle of bees on a tree. Really? And we get those calls, and we go out there, and we take a look. First thing we want to do is make sure that they're not invading a structure. Okay. Because if they're invading a structure, they become a pest that we can deal with. Like like your home or a shed or a... Right. Okay. Right. Now, if they're not invading a home, usually when they're not, they're not usually invading a home. They're kind of just hanging out. Yeah. That's what we call swarming. So they are in like this big bundle. Like of how bees. many? Like thousands of them? Thousands of them. Okay. Are just in a big bundle, like a football size or And what bigger. are they doing? What does that mean? They're resting. They're just, but, and they do it together yeah. as a group because unlike some of the other insects we've talked about who are predators, mm-hmm. they're very communal, aren't right, they? Right, right. They're a colony and they like to hang out with each other. They like to keep the queen protected. They, okay. they hang out with each other. Interesting. So what they're doing is that they're just traveling. So what they do is they rest. Okay. They rest in a big clump and that's all they're doing is resting. Hmm. You know, and, you know, people get kind of scared. They see a big old oh, bunch yeah. of bees on their tree or on the side of their house or something, and they kind of freak out a little bit, but um, they're just resting. Okay. So if that's the case, when we come out and assess, we're going to leave them alone. Okay. I mean, because they're not invading. They're not attacking. They're just resting. They're such an important insect to our ecosystem Mm -hmm. that we just don't want to take them out just because. So what do you, I mean, as a homeowner, especially if I've got small children or pets, Mm -hmm. I'm going to be very anxious to have a thousand bee swarm hanging out on the tree in my backyard. Right. And we're going to explain that to you. Okay. We're going to come out and explain that these guys are just resting. Give them about five or six hours and they'll move on. Okay. So they are just resting. They're just swarming right now. Um, Now, if they tend to go into your home and start making their way into your attic vents, soffit holes, any holes in your house, then they become invasive. Then we'll come out and assess the situation. Okay. Um, A lot of times when we see bees doing that, they've already set up a colony inside your house. Okay. So that's when the beehive is there, the queen is there. That's when we need to come in and do the removal. Because um, bees cohabitating with humans is probably not very safe. No, no, it's not. It's very, you know, some people have very allergic reactions to bee stings. Um, My service manager, and I make fun of him about this all the time. He's allergic to bees. What the heck? Yeah. So you don't send him on bee calls? Uh, I do if I want to laugh. Because uh, he'll, he'll get stung and he'll swell up real big and I'll laugh. But it's not like life threatening. No, well, at least I don't think so. It hasn't been yet. <laughs> it hasn't been yet. <laughs> Take your Benadryl with you. You'll be fine, Brent. We'll see ya. Yeah. Just get the job done. Just ask them about the beehive underneath the, the uh, trailer at a construction site. So what happened? Tell us. (laughs) Well, it was when we first started and we went out to remove a huge beehive underneath a trailer that had the insulation and the cover. So we had to take the cover off and I mean, it was probably about 10 foot long. Wow. 
And Brent wanted to show me, because I had just got here, how adventurous and how he's willing to do the job. <laughs> well, he we had the be suit on and everything. And he went underneath there, started scraping it out and everything. <laughs> And I'm standing there holding the bag, getting the, the bees and the beehive out, yeah. honeycomb out. And he just screams like a girl. <laughs> screams like a girl. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, what's going on? He said, oh, I got bit in the face. And I'm like, what? This still be in the face. Did it get up underneath his bee suit? Well, um, the bee suit has a net on it. Oh, okay. And he was underneath there, so it kind of fell up against his face. Oh. So it was up against his face so the bee had just enough room to get him. That's terrifying. And I laughed so hard. But he was fine, obviously, yeah, he, years later. Yeah, he was swelled up. He looked like Quasimodo. That's funny. And I laughed a lot. Um, and we made fun of him a lot. So uh, you do, so when you're in a situation like that and they have to be removed, what does that process look like? So we will go in and determine, are they a structural pest at that right. time? If they are a structural pest... Then we will go in and try to get them removed without killing them. Because there's a, by law, they're protected, right? It, it, it's kind of an unspoken law. Okay, gotcha. Um, we gotcha. do have a lot of chemicals that we use that do have, you cannot use during a swarm. Okay. You can't use during a pollination period. Okay. You cannot use if they're going to be pollinating. Okay. So we do have chemicals so that say that. there's some things that are protect them. Right. But we as bug tech know how important they are. Yes. And we want to preserve them as much as we can. Sure, sure. Uh, we try not to kill bees, but if they become an invasive species where it actually puts humans in danger, right. we will have to go to that extreme. But we try not to. Okay. Um, if it's something that we know we could probably save, yeah. we will talk to the customer about getting in touch with the beekeeper. And, and the beekeeper will safely gotcha. remove it and take it somewhere else. Okay. That's so. that's good to know. Mm -hmm. um, so we've talked about bees. Let's talk about a little bit about wasps and hornets. I uh -huh. didn't realize they were also pollinators. Mm -hmm. um, do we see those during certain times of year? And like, do mud daubers fall into this <laughs> yeah. whole thing? Yeah, yeah. That's that's very astute of you to pull up you know, mud daubers. So wasps, hornets, and mud daubers, they all look alike. Yeah, I can't. I don't know what's yeah. what. Yeah, I, I mean, it takes a trained eye to see it. But wasps are what we deal with mostly here in West Texas. Okay. And like I said, they're always active, but they're more active during certain times of the year. Okay. So we see a lot of them during the fall season. Mm -hmm. When the weather starts to change, starts to get cooler, they are looking for a warmer spot. Mm -hmm. And that warmer spot is usually your home or your business. Um, we see a lot of reset lighting inside, okay. on the outside of people's houses. Uh -huh. They will go up in there. And because it's a warm light bulb, okay. and they'll go in there, and you know we've done treatments where we we killed and just rain of wasps come down out of those recessed wow. lightings. Wow! So also during the spring, you know, we start seeing them really start moving, go feed, and things like that. So uh, wasps are very active during those two times a year, but they're also active all year long, just right. not as much. So if you've got a large nest, because I've seen those like on the sides of houses. Mm -hmm. Um, like, how should that be treated? It always makes me nervous to see, you know, like my husband with his <laughs> DIY can yeah. that he's going to go after these things. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't think so. Yeah. We're calling Michael. Yeah. Um, but but are there some dangers in that for a homeowner? And mm -hmm. then how do y'all come out and treat? Yeah, so wasps are different than bees. Okay. Um, they're, we will go out and they set their nest way up high, like you said. Right. And we will come out and, you know, we could wear a bee suit, but we're professionals. And we, and know what tough. we're we already said you have tough skin. Yeah, yeah, we know what we're doing. So we will go out and we will treat the wasps themselves. Yeah. Now, we have a chemical that actually kills on contact. Okay. So we will spray, they drop, like... Because they can get angry and aggressive, they can. can't they? They can, and that's why that chemical that we use is so important. Yeah. Because if you just spray a water hose up there, or just one of those or DIY stuff. not the right stuff, kind of chemical. Yeah, they're going to get very mad and very aggressive. Yeah. And they will start stinging dangerous. as much as they can. Because yeah. they're not like a bee that stings one time. They can repeatedly oh, sting, I didn't know that. sting, sting. So you definitely want to call us if you're dealing with the wasp problem, especially a big nest. Yeah. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks, Michael. That's really good information yeah, no uh, to have. And although they don't bite, they can be very dangerous, mm -hmm. especially if you've got an allergic reaction. We've been talking about bees, wasps, hornets. Yes. Uh, and that's another edition of Does It Bite? Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Good.